fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high o silver, the Lone Ranger rides again. Mystery rider of the plains, the unknown hero of the greatest legend of the West. His face was masked. No one could guess the inspiration for his life and self-sacrifice, but everyone paid tribute to his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness. Here was a champion of right against might, the symbol of American justice and American democracy, the Lone Ranger. Tonto, carried by his paint horse scout, headed into territory that was familiar to him. He watched the distant hills that sheltered the ranch of his old friend, Mustang Mag. Tonto rode alone. We reach Mustang Mag by night, scout. Maybe find word of mask friend there. Lone Ranger maybe leave message with... The Indian speech broke off, for his eyes caught a faint wisp of smoke that rose from a distant hill. Then a second, and a third thin column rose toward the sky. That signal, three smoke signal. Scout, that mean go quick. Get him up, scout! Dark now. It's too late for Tondro to see smoke signals. Plenty of dry brush on the fire and make beacon lights. If that engine's anywhere inside of plenty of miles, he'll sure come. Off a brush. But... Oh, Tonto, you're needed, Redskin. You're needed bad. What was that? Six life sounds like a horse. It's him. Hey, Tonto! Tonto! He comes! Oh, thank Providence for this. You signal. You want Tonto? Tonto, you ain't no idea how bad I wanted you. I've been here building these fires since noon. Now it's an hour past dark. You're plenty tired, Mustang Mag. You go downhill now. Go out. I reckon I am. I might done in. Let your horse walk behind so as I can tell you what's happened. Oh, me, me hunt for mask friend. Where, Lone Ranger? You know? There's things I got to tell you, Tonto. What? Well, where, Lone Ranger? Now, wait. I'll tell you where he is, but wait till I get to that. First off, Tonto, I want you to know that I'm sure of one thing. What that? Tonto, get this through your head and keep it first and foremost, no matter what else you may think. The Lone Ranger's going to ride again. Where him now? He's in my house. What matter? Shot and hurt bad. 
He got mixed up in a range war. Where? Range war? Who shoot him? Now, let me tell it, and then he'll tell you what he wants you to do. He's been a-hoping you'd come and carry out the plans he's been making. Here's the house. Better come in now and tend your horse later on. Ah. Uh, scout, you wait. Now, listen, Tonto, before you go inside. Let me tell you something. Uh huh. Don't let him talk too long. He's bad and need a rest, and he's been fighting off sleep, hoping you'd come here. Tonto Savvy. Listen to him close and promise anything he wants you to do. That's right. He's been a trying to write things down. He's terrible anxious to get something tended to. But the biggest thing, and the one that counts right now, is to get him back to health. Remember that. Now go on in. There he is. How, friend? Tai Kimosabe. Tonto here now. Tonto, the range war. I came to see how things were. Two months back, you tell Tonto range war start someday. Yes, Tonto. The homesteaders, the ranchers. Homesteader, rancher, them fight now? The homesteaders have been building fences. Cattlemen not want homesteader make fence, huh? There. There's already been a shooting. I was hit. Managed to get here. Hmm. What Tonto do? The trouble, Tonto. Both homesteaders and ranchers feel... They both feel justified. Both have rights. Tonto, the range war will start soon. Here. Here, Kimosabe. I've written it out. Take this. Read it and act. You, Tonto, ride for us both. Tonto, fix wound. It's dressed, Tonto. Now, sleep. Sleep. Must ride for both of us. Ride, Tonto. <sighs> Him sleep now. You going to do what he says? Can you make out his writing? Tonto, go now. Find cattlemen in town. Find them in cafe. Get him, Scout. Get him up, Scout! In the cafe in town... Two of the cattlemen whom the masked man had mentioned were already at a table. Collins said he'd be here as soon as he could, Miller. Well, he better hurry up. We've got to stick together, the three of us. If we do, the rest of the cattlemen will stay in line. Well, just so, Bevan. We can't let Farnsworth and all the rest of them homesteaders hinder our cattle raising. Oh, there's Collins. Hey, Sam. Uh, hiya, gents. Late for the meeting? No, you ain't too late. Come on into the back room where we can talk more private. Hey, suits me. How are you, Miller? What do you care? <laughs> Maybe I don't care, Miller. As long as you stay in line with me and Bevan. I told the barkeep to save this room for us. Shut the door. Now find yourselves chairs and sit down. First off, I let it be known around that there wasn't to be no more upstart ranchers firing hot lead at any homesteaders till we give the word. Ain't you wonder that shooting didn't bust out into the range while we expected. Yeah. yeah while we're talking about that, you... You heard about the Lone Ranger, ain't you? Heard about him? Who ain't? I mean around here. Him? Around here? You sure, Bevan? He was seen out near the old oak. No. Yes. I heard that he was hit during the gunfight. Ah. Bevan, you sure it was a Lone Ranger? Well, that's what I heard. He was able to ride away, though. I wonder what side he's on. Homesteaders or us? I don't know, but we gotta play our cards close. Uh, just so. Hey, what's this meeting for, anyhow? Now get to the point. I'm getting to it, Collins. Well, what is the point? I met and talked for the last time with that old gent that's in charge of the homesteaders. Your name's Farnsworth. Yeah. I told him that he'd better have them fences down by morning or we'd take them down. What'd he say? Well, him and all the rest of the homesteaders will be waiting with rifles for us to try. Yeah. Uh, the gunslingers I got for cow hands can wipe out all of the homesteaders. The cow hands the three of us have together... All put together can do it easy. And they'll welcome the chance. My boys are itching for a fight. They'll have it. But we got to get one thing straight. Well... We stick together. Sure we do. Why not? I'll tell you why not, Collins. 
We ain't none of us had no great liking for the others. We're just business rivals, that's all. I ain't forgot the time you got your cattle across the bridge into the railroad, but beat me because the bridge went down before I got there. Now, that was just an accident, Bevan. Mighty convenient one for you. Now, don't you two get to fight. And as for you, Miller, there was a time when I had to buy land from you to get the water on it. Only to find out later that the water on my land went dry because you turned a quick to one side. Oh, that was a long time back. Well, I'm just making my point. No double crossing on this deal. There's nothing to gain by it, Bevin. We've got to stick together, ain't we? We sure as thunder have. Now we're to meet at dawn, you savvy? Yep, sure. We all get our men lined up and herd the cattle to the homesteaders' fences. Then if they try and stop us, the shooting will begin. Get them up, Scott! That same evening, as Tonto raced from the town to the section where the homesteaders lived, Dan Farnsworth sat in his small home with his daughter and a couple of his friends. No use trying to talk to those ranchers. They're bound and determined to drive us out in here. But, Paul, wouldn't it be best to go? Can't do it, Betty. Ain't no chance now, Miss Betty. But surely every one of you men will be killed in a war. We'll be killed if we go. Ain't no place to go in the first place. If there was, we ain't the food. You see, honey, the trouble is we... We just got food enough to last till our crops are grown. If we leave, we won't have seed for more crops. But won't those ranchers listen to reason, Pa? Nope. It could be settled without bloodshed. How could it, Miss Betty? We could fix a road to water and still keep the land fenced. Uh, you don't savvy the thing, honey. That could be done, sure enough, if the ranchers wanted us here. But they don't. They'll cut our fences in the morning. And we can take it standing or sitting. Yep. They'll be on hand with hundreds of steers. And in half an hour, we won't have no crops. Likely some of us will be shot. It's all so unnecessary. Why can't something be done? You talk to all the rest of the men, Hank? Yep. They're all set to meet at the fence at dawn? They'll all be on hand, sure enough. Well, suppose nine o'clock. We'd better clean up our shooting irons and then turn in. So it will be fresh when the fighting comes. Uh, We'll shove off. Come on, Chuck. Right. Good night, Farnsworth. Wait. Uh, what's the matter, Miss Betty? Uh, I thought I heard something. I didn't hear nothing, honey. There. Do you hear that? Oh, it's a night bird of some sort, that's all. Night bird? Yes, a night bird that wears moccasin. Let me at that door. What the... You remember, Paul, the trail overland. We heard that call then. Why, Juniper, I wonder... What in Tunkett? Yes. Yes, I hear you. I hear your call. Come out of the darkness. <laughs> You remember Tonto, and Tonto plenty glad. Redskin, it's a gun. Oh, hold it, boys. That's a friendly Indian. It's Tonto. Oh, Tonto, come in. Come in and welcome. Uh. I remember you, Tonto. You and a masked friend helped us on the trail. Why'd you bother giving that signal? Oh, Tonto had to know. You had to know what? That you remember Tonto. Oh, of course we remember you. If it hadn't been for you and your friend, Indian, we'd never reached here. You trust Tonto? Why, sure. Sure we trust you. Who is the redskin Farnsworth? Name is Tonto, and he's our friend. And plenty much happened for morning. You trust Tonto? Yes, of course. Well, what about it? Girl, you come. You mean go with you? Uh, but where? What for? You come. Tonto tell by and by. Now hold on, Tonto. It's after nine o'clock. That we... good time. Girl, come. Here, Lone Ranger, plan. Plan? For, for what? For make happiness here. Stop range war. Ain't no way the war can be prevented. Oh. Once before, you said there wasn't any way we could be saved. Then we heard a night bird's call and, and found friends and the way to safety. Mm. Tonto, lead the way. I'll go with you. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes... Please permit us to pause for just a moment.
to continue our story. Betty Farnsworth, putting implicit faith in Tonto, rode with him toward the ranch where Miller lived. While they rode, the Indian explained to the girl just what part she was to play in the strange scheme. Miller had been home from the meeting in town but a short time when he heard hoofs stopping. Then, a moment later, there was a rap on the door. Now, who in thunder is... Good evening. I'll come in. Why, uh, sure. Yes, sir. I'm Betty Farnsworth. Father sent me to speak to you. Oh, Farnsworth, eh? He's the leader of the homestead. I know who he is, miss. Now, there's nothing for you to speak to me about. Oh, I it's have... all right. I know all about the plans. My father couldn't come to see you, so he sent me. I can sign the agreement just as well as he can. What agreement? Oh, you needn't try and make believe. I, I'm really Betty Farnsworth. Father can't see very well. That's the reason he sent me. We can't take a chance on not having an airtight agreement, you know. The money represents a lot to us. Uh, money, eh? How much money? Now, look, Mr. Bevan, uh, I... What did you call me? Mr. Bevan. That's your name, isn't it? Gracious sakes alive, you act like you never made an agreement with Paul. We know that the three of you are figuring on attacking us. Mr. Bevan. Come here, miss. You sit right down there. Well, thanks. Uh, right there by the table, that's it. Now, I've got to make dead sure you know what you're talking about. Can't take no chances, you savvy? Well? You tell me just what the terms of the agreement was. But you certainly haven't forgotten them. Well, go on, miss. You tell me. Well... In the morning, you three cattlemen and all your cowhands plan to drive your cattle across our land, through our fences, and over our crops. The agreement that Paul would like to make, representing all of the homesteaders, is to get one of you three on his side. Uh -huh. I reckon he would. Well, Mr. Bevan, the plan was just this. Yeah? You'll hold back your men in the morning. When the other two cattlemen and their hired hands tear down the fences and start driving their herds across our land, you'll have your men shooting on our side. For that, you'll be paid all the cash we got. How much cash you got? Mm, all of us put together can raise over $1,000. Ah, so that was the agreement, eh? Well, wasn't it? The cash will be ready for you at midnight at the south corner of Paul's piece of land. Uh, your pa will be there, eh? Oh, yes, he'll be there. Yeah, well, that's all right, then. You were to have the agreement all drawn up in right? Oh, well, uh, I ain't got around to that yet. Uh, it won't take long, though. I'll draw her right up. I'll have to take a copy back to Paul, and then he'll get the cash together and meet you, you see. Uh -huh. Hi, Savvy. Uh, there ain't but one thing. Well, what's that? I don't like giving your pa a copy of no such agreement. But why not? Well, what if he was to show it to Collins and Bev... Uh, uh, Collins and Miller? If they were shot in the attack in the morning, he couldn't show it to him, could he? Double cross and honorary pogan. Huh? Uh, oh, uh, nothing, nothing. Uh, here now, I'll just draw up the agreement. Won't take long to write it down. Uh, here's paper. Now, I got a pencil in my pocket. Miller, thinking Betty had made a mistake in coming to his house instead of to Bevan's, wrote a simple agreement, signed it, and handed it to the girl. He made a copy of this, which she signed, and then... There you are, sir. Now get along. You'll be at the corner of the house at midnight, won't you? I'll be there, all right. Good evening, then. Evening. Of all the ornery double-crossing polecats. So Bevan was making a deal with them homesteaders, huh? He planned to take $1,000 in cash and then turn on me and Collins. <laughs> well, I reckon I've spiked his guns. I'll get the cash and it'll be my boys that do the holding back when the shooting comes off. Betty and Tonto rode toward another ranch house, the place that the real Mr. Bevan owned. Bevan was surprised by a rap on the door. Uh, what's wrong? Cowhands coming here at this hour. Well, uh, oh. Evening, sir. I've come from Paul. He couldn't get here himself, and besides, he can't see very well to read the agreement. What agreement? Why, the one he wanted to make with you. Oh, well, maybe you don't know who I am. My name's Betty Farnsworth. Paul's in charge of the homesteaders. And you come here? Well, Paul has to see the agreement before he can pay you the thousand dollars, Mr. Collins. My name is... What agreement? Oh, you know. You are to go to our house at midnight and get the cash. Isn't that the way it was agreed? Hmm. Midnight. Cash. Yes. Uh, you said a thousand dollars? That's mighty good pay for just shooting Bevins and Miller's men instead of ours, isn't it? Uh, miss, uh, come in, come in. 
You sit down. We gotta have a talk. And a little later that same night, Betty spoke to Collins, but she called him... Mr. Miller, I don't see why you act like you... Uh, what'd you call me? Aren't you, Mr. Miller? Oh, gracious, don't tell me I have the wrong men. That would be... Oh, oh, there, oh. there now, miss. It's all right. Sure, my name's Miller. <laughs> the thing is, you see, Miss Farnsworth, I, uh, I ain't often called Mister. <laughs> now you sit yourself down and tell me all there is to tell about your pa and your friends. There ain't no reason why you can't draw up this agreement as well as your pa. That's why I'm here. The homes of the settlers were dark long before the hour of midnight, but no one slept. The most capable of the men were crowded into the little Farnsworth home, sitting in the dark with their guns at hand. When someone spoke, it was in a low voice. Uh, what time is it? Anyone tell by feeling the hands of the clock? I can, Farnsworth. I had the glass off in the clock on the shelf beside me. Uh, it's right close to midnight. Oh, I hope nothing goes wrong. Betty, I ain't holding much hope. It's too much to think any such scheme as this would work out. Whose scheme is it? That Redskins. No, it's the Indian's friend who thought it out, the Lone Ranger. Even so, And I'm counting on it. The Lone Ranger knows the sort of men that Collins, Miller, and Bevan are. Why, when I talked to him, every one was right quick to double-cross the other two. Uh, Cash money speaks awful loud to them critters. Who's near the door? Uh, I am, Miss Betty. Can you see outside much? Uh, It's a plenty dark. No moon at all. Where's Tonto? Well, he's right outside the door, watching. Good. Honey, suppose them men come and demand that cash. Well? We ain't got it. Tonto told me about what to do. They'll shoot us on the spot. They sure as thunder will shoot us. Oh, eh? leave things to me. But Betty... I've been told just what to do. Now, please don't none of you interfere. Well, if there's any shooting... There's not going to be any shooting. What? What's that? Tonto. What is it? Tonto, come now. One man? Uh, one Tonto, come. Maybe other come soon. We see. Oh, there, oh. <coughs> this is the corner of the house, she said. I reckon I'm supposed to wait right here. Uh, the more I think of the way that snake was going to double cross us. And after us pledging a stick together. I beat him to it, though. There's someone coming. Might be Farnsworth. Thought he'd be inside the house. Riding like a man that's younger than Farnsworth. Coming right fast. That's you, Farnsworth? What was that? Hey, who are you? Who are you? Bevin! Miller! What are you doing here? I might ask the same of you. Collins! Hey, what sort of a deal brings you here, Bevan? That's my affair. And Miller. Hey, what's going on here? That's what I sure ain't gonna know. Now, look here. If you two were scheming to double-cross me, You I'll... two look to me like the schemers. Well, I... Hey, the house is lit up all of a sudden. Will you men come in here? But that girl. The Farnsworth girl. Come here, won't you? All of you. The men are all together and ready to work with you. Now, what in tarnation is <laughs> she... I kept it a secret on the part of each of you. You... You what? Secret? Do come in. We have a committee of homesteaders here. Come on. Now, you see here, girl. I want to know now, just what this... and I'll explain everything to you. What is this, a trap? What's your name? Well, I... You uh... told me your uh, name Now, was... look, Miss Betty, these other two... Well, are... they had the same idea you did, sir. Uh, same idea, huh? Yes. And as long as each one of you fine, thoughtful gentlemen were so eager to try and settle things before there was bloodshed in the morning, I thought it just as well to let all three of you come here. Fine, thoughtful gentlemen. Settle things? Strange that all of you had the same suggestion. I mentioned it to the men here, and they're all more than agreeable. Betty, you never made mention of... Paul, I'll do the talking. Uh Uh-huh. You see, we thought that the solution to everything would be to break our fence and build a road through to the water. Then we could put up another fence so the cattle would be fenced in the road. Then they could cross our land and get all the water they want, and we could all be contented. 
Well, that was the idea that each of you three men had. Each one of the three of you mentioned it and wanted to come here and discuss it. Well, uh, there's something doggone funny about this. Yes, isn't there, Mr... Uh, uh, who are you? <coughs> Go on, ma'am. It was so fine of you three. Each one wanted to come to the agreement with us, then tell his two friends how a war had been avoided. Now... We're willing to help you build the road if you'll help us build the new fences that'll be needed. Aren't we, boys? You bet. We are. Now, is that agreed? Uh, you mean, miss, that uh, we... Uh... Or did each of you come here for something else? I come here to do what you said. All right, Miller, so did I. Well, me too. You two mavericks ain't gonna outdo me. Good. Then there's nothing more to talk about. Now, if you'll just sign this agreement that's all drawn up and waiting, I'll take it into the next room, and you can come in one at a time and sign it. I'll go first. Now, you look here, Betty Farnsworth. I Would know you? who you are. Your right name is Miller. But that's not the name you signed to an agreement we made in your house a little while ago. If them two hear about that Every agreement... Every one of you would like to double-cross the other. Well, you'll not get the chance to double-cross anyone. Remember, you signed another name. So the agreement doesn't mean a thing as far as you're getting cash is concerned. But it would mean something if those other two saw it. Well, uh, Dad Raddich, you got them with the same trick you got me. Yes, I did. But there isn't one of you will dare open his mouth. Now, sign right here, please, Mr. Uh, Miller. You got me. Doggone, I take my head off to you, miss. Don't bother. It's the Lone Ranger's idea. Well, I wondered what side he was on. Both sides, you stupid idiot. He wants us both to live here in peace. Well, maybe... By thunder, we ain't losing nothing. Of course you're not. <laughs> and you'll be grown eating things that we can swap for beef. Sign right here. I sure will. <laughs> it's all right, miss. I'm a man that knows when he's been took in and I can laugh at it. <laughs> There's my name, Miller. <laughs> Wait till I get those other fellas. <laughs> Come on, Bevan. Come on, Collins. We're all three caught on the same hook. But by thunderation, I'm glad of it. <laughs> Thanks, Miss Betty. <laughs> Don't thank me. Thank the Lone Ranger. Get him up, you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs>